Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is Takeoff Tuesday. I'm excited to be here with you. It's October 20th. We've got a great training today, but first just a couple of quick announcements and some dates to take note of. Our quote of the day is far and away the best prize that life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Theodore Roosevelt. Renatus Regionals. Our regionals event is coming up this weekend. It's October 23rd and 24th, two full days of awesome training. This is going to be really great. I'm, I'm imagining they're going to be talking about just what's been working over the last year as we've all been facing a lot of changes with our businesses and just with our lives in general, our daily routines. And so we're going to be learning about what's been working. And uh, we're learning from seven figure income earners in Renatus. And so it's definitely something that you wanna take serious and show up to and be on time both days. One day will be a more localized um, regional training where the other day will be a full day of national leadership training. So I'm really, really looking forward to our, re our regionals this year. We also have dates for national conference, which will be March 18th through the 20th. 2021, we are going to be meeting online for our national conference. Our theme for next year is shift, shifting higher into focused transformation. Also mark your calendar for August 13th through the 17th, 2021 for our leadership retreat. We're going to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Always a blast going to leaders retreat. I'm very, very excited to see you all there. And if you have not already, make sure you Visit this website, check out the short video that's there. Our Michael and his team have put together this video just to explain what the OES is and what's included with it. A couple of things that we've added on to our daily and weekly support system every week on Thursday for an hour, just before our 7 p.m. list of events. We have a weekly private capital masterclass with Dane Clark, where we're going through some of our private money classes in our education and going through how to apply it best and just what's been working really well for Dane as he's had a lot of success with building private capital for his deals. Also every day after our marketing call from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, we're doing our dream call, Daily Real Estate Action Mastermind. So watch your classes and bring questions. Do your research on your deals and again, bring questions. This is a great space and a safe space to bring any concerns or any thoughts that you might have regarding any type of real estate transactions that you're looking at. So again, we're doing that every day at nine o'clock directly after our marketing call. And so far it's been a lot of fun. And then we have added on Fridays to our weekly calls. So for the last several years, if, you, if you've been around with us for a while, you know that we've been doing Monday through Thursday. And so now we are Monday through Friday. Friday, we are learning with Lily Puertas and she's been very successful with Renatus and it's just a pleasure to work with her on Fridays. And of course, after her call at 9 a.m., we have our dream call. Also every day at noon mountain time, Michael Huggins and Scott Rowe have put together a daily get to know you call where they will interview a Renata student and it's all about your guests. And so get your guests in front of this call. It's really short and sweet. It's just 15 minutes. And that's a great opportunity for you to get your guests in front of a story, just a quick story if they need an additional exposure. Every week on Wednesday, we are touring a fix and flip or some type of transaction typically in Salt Lake City. And the, uh, this particular deal was Juan's first deal. He's 19 and uh, it's really, really exciting. So he purchased this property for 95,000, put about 50,000 into it, and the ARV is 210. The projected net profit is $40,000 in just a short three months. And it's incredible to see what this education is doing for so many people around the country. And that's why those Wednesday night house tours are really crucial, critical to get your guests in front of because they're seeing all kinds of amazing things that people are doing just left and right with this education, what we're learning. For our events this week, take a screenshot of this if you'd like. This is our weekly schedule. So every Tuesday we have a profits intro with Michael Huggins where he takes about 50 to 60 minutes going over our profits education. 
And these webinars have been a lot of fun. There's people from all around the world attending. Every Wednesday, as I mentioned, we are meeting at, well, meeting online at a, a virtual house tour where we learn all about a particular deal being done. So it's a great exposure for your guests. I would recommend this. Any, any exposure is great, but I think this is a great first exposure. And then we have our Thursday night with a plethora of events. We've got our, yeah, I was gonna say English house tour, excuse me. We have our house tour in Spanish. So Wednesday night, it's in English. If you want your, any Spanish speaking guests to attend on Thursday, we have the same house tour, but it's offered in Spanish. And also on Thursday, we have our Pillars of Wealth intro presentation. We have our follow-up and funding webinar, our onboarding session. We have an essentials class offered in both, not class, but a mastermind, offered in both English and Spanish. We also have our business development study group and a few study groups built all around real estate investing. So we have fix and flip, wholesaling, multifamily, and short-term rental. We are recording, we're also on Facebook Live. So if you'd like to catch the recordings, you can always tune in on Facebook Live or not live, but on our Facebook page, which is where you can find these recordings. Just plug in Renata's Team Elevate in Facebook and request to be a part of this group. Also, there's a lot of important announcements there. So you definitely wanna be a part of that. And then on YouTube, we have several years worth of training. Excuse me, my nose is running. <laughs> okay, on YouTube, we have about five years worth of valuable trainings on there. Every single morning, we've been meeting for years and years now, so there's a lot of value. If you are newer to the group, make sure you go back and listen to some, some of the previous recordings, and even if you've been around for a while, it wouldn't hurt to go back and re-listen to some of these. I will save them in YouTube under the date and the trainer. So today, <clears throat> we get to learn from Bill Predabon. Bill is such an incredible individual who it's really been a pleasure to get to know over the last several years. And I really miss seeing him regularly as we've not been meeting at our, at our office for quite some time now. So uh, both Bill and I work here in Scottsdale. And again, it's just been such a pleasure getting to know Bill over the years. Bill is very, very passionate about what he does. He has an, he has an amazing energy about him and as you can see in the photo, he, he loves animals. He adopted this dog earlier this year and, or maybe it was last year, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but he's just a delight to be around. And we're so fortunate to get to spend every Tuesday morning with Bill. Before Renatus, Bill was a pro skier for 10 years. And he actually realized after doing that for so long, he wasn't really qualified to do much else. He decided he needed, he needed to make a change. So he learned about owning stores, owning shops, and he got into franchising and he owned a couple of sports stores. And due to lack of knowledge that ended up, um, he ended up losing everything and that cost him the business. In 2007, he heard about real estate investing. So he attempted to do this on his own without the education. And that was right actually right around when the crash happened. So he ended up upside down in over $400,000 during the 2008 crash due to lack of education. And then after that was when Bill found Renatus and in his first year alone, he made eight times more than he did the previous year as both a realtor and a loan officer. So Bill put what he learned to work and ever since then he has completed over 150 deals well over that and has grossed multiple seven figures in real estate. He is also a marketing leader and he is recognized by our CEO Bob Snyder as a key leader. He is on the pit meaning he's in training to be on the PAC, the President's Advisory Council. So again, we are very fortunate to get to learn from Bill Predabon. I'm excited for what he has to share with us today. Good morning, Bill, how are you? I am awesome, Keely. Thanks so much for that awesome introduction. It's such a pleasure to be on here and hear that introduction. I was just texting my team, I'm so excited. I'm like, I want my team to be on the call too. Um, so yeah, we adopted Evie. We were just thinking about that. We got uh, the figured out the got me date. I think we got her in February last year uh, or this year. Uh, so we're coming up on a, our first year with her. Um, yeah, so cool. I love that introduction. I started thinking back to 2008 and 2007 and, and uh, 
getting in the real estate. And um, man, I don't know how I lost that play against sports business. We were doing like, that was my thirties. So I, I, I bought in with like 15 grand when I was 30. I did. I remember, I remember digging a ditch in Colorado, in Colorado, you guys, in my summer job during when I was skiing. And um, I think I told this story once, but I was, I was 28 and I was digging this ditch, but I ran, I, I was managing like all my friends at the Vail rec, rec district. It was the best job ever, like, except for the manual labor, it was the best job ever. And we did all the sports for the whole Vail recreation district. And they held a bunch of events, major soccer tournaments and volleyball tournaments and stuff. But we got to use everything, play tennis and we got to play golf for free and everything. And, um, and uh, we were, but then it was the winter time. It was coming up on winter and the end of the, it was fall, the end of the summer. And we had to re-irrigate the soccer, the soccer field, the rugby field. And, uh, and I guess, so my buddy, my buddy's dad, you guys, like people in Vail are either really rich or they're like me. <laughs> and luckily, like, and luckily I have my parents that could bail me out every once in a while. But uh, this guy's dad owns so CompuWare software company. So his dad was very similar to Bill Gates. You don't hear the story as much because he's not quite, but this guy was on the 400 richest, this guy's dad was on the 400 richest men in America. Um, he owned, he started soft. CompuWare software, they're still around with, um, with a couple of his buddies, they dropped out of Harvard and they did start it in their garage, just like B Gates did. And um, they own like the Hartford Whalers, which are now, uh, you know, in, in um, Carolina hurricanes. And then, um, and uh, he, he had, he had gotten his inheritance. Like it wasn't inheritance. It was, it was uh, his trust fund when he was 25 and I was 28 and uh, Matt was sitting up on the ledge and he goes, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, get in the darn ditch and dig this ditch, uh, you know, get to work. And he's like, I'm out. I'm not doing that. And I'm like, what do you mean you're not doing that? And he's like, I'm going home. He's like, my stock just crashed and I lost like $300,000, he said, or something, I don't know, in his stock market. And, uh, and he got up and left. And, and I remember being in that ditch, like six feet under. It's like, I've got to get a job. <laughs> like, I've got to get a life. It's funny. Um, anyway, you were doing your introduction, which I greatly appreciate and bringing me back to some of the mistakes I made, which kind of um, leads us into today. Um, I, I'm going to offer the opportunity to do something a little different. Uh, it's not necessarily like crazy out of the box different, but you know, I always, and you're, you're welcome to this, right? Dane and I, and, and of course, Wanda, everybody does it, but you know, Michael has an agenda because he's in the know, right? And so yesterday's training, as you guys know, as Michael Huggins trains, as always, is phenomenal and really shares everything that's going on, gives you all the tools that you need, in my opinion, to really excel in this business or at least succeed in the business whatsoever. And um, we try to tie it all in and give you our hands-on experience and stuff. But so you're more than welcome to come out and ask a question about, you know, a specific person you're dealing with, client, customer, prospect, whatever, a situation you're in, anything specific to your, to your marketing. But um, on this other note, maybe there's something that you want to ask or talk about, about not really like mindset, but we can go there with um, like the way Wanda trains on Thursday, which if you guys are missing Wednesday, uh, Thursdays, you know, Wanda has a lot of passion and a lot of heart. And, um, and she's a good lady and she does good at this business and she's a good investor. And it's good to hear, you know, she had to work hard to overcome a lot to, um, even though she came from a place of education and, and, and good jobs and things like that, her mindset change was, was, was large. She had to break out of those chains of tradition. So anyway, but I'm thinking like, if there's something that I can help you with understanding, like, uh, and I'll give you an example, but why it's hard or kind of the, the why or the, the theory behind it or, or like, you know, general concepts of, of Renatus or the business or, you know, anything specific to like how, how I've been, 
semi-successful, if you want to call it that, like, because obviously not everybody's doing it, but everybody's on their way to do it, right? There's going to be a lot more people in Renatus really having the success with real estate. Obviously, we have hundreds and hundreds of real estate testimonies, and then we have the marketing and where the marketing is starting to pick up more and more each year. It goes, it gets better and better and better, but like anything along the way. So for example, um, you know, when Keely just said, she does such a good job, you guys have just taken care of this call and she's really grown it. Um, the introduction so well uh, to, to remind us of what's coming up and, and really set the stage for the day. So it's awesome. And thank you again. And, uh, but she mentioned, um, she mentioned I made eight times the amount of money I made in 2008 as I did in 07. So if I remember correctly, it's, it's, it's pretty close to that. It was on my um, tax return. I only made like, I only made like $17,000 in 2007 because I was a real estate agent and I was a loan officer and I closed a couple small loans, but you guys in 2007, you probably, some of you may not remember this because you're too young, but the rest of us that were in real estate at all at that time, there was like 1200 plus banks in the United States, over 1200 banks. And by, by the end of 2007 into 2008, there was less than 600. They were just filing bankruptcy. They literally were, were insolvent. And um, many of the banks that I was dealing, getting loans for people from, especially when people were trying to refi, they were trying to save their butts. Uh, and as a loan officer, they just weren't, the loans weren't being funded and uh, the banks were closing and I, I couldn't get loans closed to save my life and I didn't make any money. So 2008, I made, I made, um, I worked on about a hundred short sales between first mortgages and second mortgages. It wasn't like a hundred different properties. There probably was over a hundred, but, uh, but I was physically working at simultaneously on, on over 50 short sales at a time. Files took up in my entire table, all over the, the floor. And I was always on the phone with the bank. Uh, trying to get one of these freaking things closed. And it took me seven months to close my first short sale. And, um, but I will tell you this, this is one of the examples I want to give if you had a, a thought or a question. I was lucky. The timing couldn't have been better. The, the difference between luck and, and being able to be successful, right? Or, or being able to capitalize on luck is I was in a situation where I had already paid for the education so when short sales became prevalent, right? I mean, this was a thought process I had in December of 2007 was I had just paid for the education. And, and I remember banging my head against the wall, still trying to do loans and be an agent. And it wasn't working. And I was making 100% commission on both of those two things, right? But they weren't. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to freaking do 100% of a loan and I get this guy a loan for a million dollars and I'm going to make um, you know, two or three points on the loan, I'm going to make, you know, not very much money. But if I can make 100% of the commission, right, if I can do one deal and make $10,000, why would I, I, why would I not work on that? And so <clears throat> the difference was I, I put myself in an opportunity to be able to learn how to do short sales. Everything, every loan that I was trying to do was upside down. I mean, I didn't even know what that meant until I started realizing that these people, these houses were worth less than they could, they needed to refi out of them to pay off their bills or, or whatever. So the banks weren't refining them. And so I was like, well, I'll just short sell these houses. I've got all the damn leads anyway. And so the leads were abundant, you guys, right? It was a market where when you get through this market in investing in real estate and you learn what you're learning and you seriously take a little bit of time, <laughs> the down market is the easiest freaking market to invest in ever, right? To my experience, now maybe I'm wrong, but it was easy. It was easy to find a flip. It was easy to find a short sale. It was easy to go to the auction. There was one day I went to the auction. There were 2,500 properties that went to sale on one Monday, Black Monday. It was October of 2008. I, you know, which was, I guess, 12 years ago. And so, so here's what I'm getting at. If there's something you want to know um, that would help you feel better about your future, 
you know what I mean? We get on this call and everybody's working hard. We've got this new system by Eric and, and uh, Nancy that's going to be amazing. Um, I don't know. I'm not a systems guy like that. I don't know what my, my take is going to be on it. You know, uh, I, sh I probably should have taken a double dose of ADD medicine, listened to Eric for two hours yesterday, trying to pay attention. Um, and I don't even have ADD meds. So maybe I should go get some. I don't know. Anybody, a doctor, you want to prescribe it to me? But um, but I, I got to figure out if I'm going to do that, right? But I have a system. And, and it's if, you could, if I could move my computer, you could see it's paperwork everywhere. But you got to have a system of some sort. And an automated system is way better than my system. It's more efficient, effective. It's, it's, it's going to be faster. It's scalable. All of the above. If I had to work with a hundred clients right now, prospects on Renatus, and I was doing it on a piece of paper and I had to transfer it every night and I had to put it on my whiteboard and erase this whiteboard. In fact, I, I need to erase my whiteboard to start over again um, and transfer and regroup, uh, which I haven't done because it takes so much time. Not a good way to do things. So take advantage of that. But anyway, my point is, if you have anything that might help you on more of a theoretical, um, uh, an honest, truthful concept of what business is and how, you know, and I want to keep going. Let me give you another example. Um, the property that we're closing on, uh, one of them, I've got like four in escrow right now, right? And, and it's, it's fun. I mean, it's busy, um, but it's, you know, the end result is typically good. It's not always great, <laughs> but it's typically good when you sell a house, uh, unless you're, a consumer. A lot of times consumers sell their house and it's not a good thing. They're either too emotionally attached, which is, which is the case, but even then they're making money. Right. But a lot of times people have to sell their house and they're not making money. They're not getting what they wanted out for it, out of, out of it. They didn't fix it up and, and improve it over time. Right. So the government allows them to de depreciate it, but not their primary residence. So it just deteriorates to nothing because they never put money back into their own home. They never invested in their own future home. And so it's not a great thing for a lot of people. Um, they, you know, over time, they've accumulated some money, but really they paid for their, they paid for their equity because they've been paying interest on a loan. As you guys all know, you watch Velocity Banking. Um, they paid interest on a loan over 30 years or 20 years. And, you know, you pay $400,000 for a $300,000, $200,000 house, right? Um, anyway, so like the property we're selling right now, Here's a property we bought and I didn't buy it. My wife bought it. She bought it in 2006. It was a new construction home and she lived in it. And then when I would travel, when I started dating her and I was traveling here from California every, every weekend or every couple of weeks, I would stay there. Um, I remember she had an apartment, um, a townhouse that she rented while it was getting built. And then I would stay there and then we moved into this house together. And she was, she was on the, I didn't have, well, I, at the time I had, I was still okay, but, uh, but my, it was, the writing was on the wall, right? So it was her house. And, um, and then the market crashed. She paid two fifty dollars for this house. But I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, you guys have all probably read it. And, and he talked about cash flow. And he talked about rental property. And he talked about, you know, being a rich dad. And I was like, that's me. I got to do that. I didn't even, I wasn't even a father, but I was going to do that. And so... Uh, so I kept that property. I convinced my wife to use her credit, as you guys know, and uh, get a new house, right? I remember when I started, real, this is a true story, you guys. Uh, <laughs> she's like, we should get an island. I wish I had an island in the kitchen because this kitchen is okay. And we remodeled it. She put on, she paid for some granite. We picked out some granite on there because there was a spec home, which means the lady back out of it and she didn't have any upgrades. So we upgraded it when we got new appliances and stuff. And so it was a little bit nicer house. Than the, than the basic. And, uh, but it did, it wasn't, it wasn't big enough for an island. And, and I, I was like, I don't know what an island is. Like I did 2007, you guys, I didn't know what an island in the kitchen was. And, uh, and if you don't know what an island is, uh, don't feel bad. Uh, you can still be a good real estate investor. <laughs> so, so I started looking at model homes because the market was crazy. It was booming. There were still people buying, buying, you know, building model homes. They were closeouts hundred thousand dollars off and i was like babe i got it i found this model home and i was an agent right so i was going to get this investor kickback or this agent kickback like 
$15,000 back on this house. They were offering and all stuff. I was like, this is the best deal ever. I'm going to close on this thing with 100% financing and they're going to put 15 grand in my pocket. I'm a real estate investor. And, um, and anyway, the point to this is, is, uh, is that we were fortunate enough to have education as you guys have, and then be able to ride this storm, right? And, and the market crashed and that, that house was short selling you guys for, she bought it for 250. It was a three bedroom, two bath, two story, two car garage cluster home, which means it shared a driveway with four other homes. And, and it was short selling for about 80 grand, 80,000 bucks. So it wasn't until this year alone, this is the first year that that house has been valued over 250. I have watched it and watched it and watched it. Um, hindsight's 2020, but we got lucky. I put that, I, when we bought the, the bigger house with the island, 100% financing, that one dropped $300,000. That one was short selling for 190 and we were into it for 490, you guys. That's the truth. I remember talking to the bank, I was gonna short sell our own house. Um, and buy it. I was going to have my bunk company buy it. And the banks were like, I don't care. Um, so if you have any thoughts or comments on this, just comment in the chat or what I'm not just my story. What I'm trying to get out is there's something that you want to know that if there's something you need to know that could help you feel good and, and understand like what's, what's real and possible. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to give my landscape for these two checks. I'll call you. Uh, I don't know. I got to call you. I'm on a call. Uh, I don't know what he was talking about. Um, then just, just come on out and say it. Like, I'm just trying to say, if, give you guys, if there's an opportunity, if it makes sense, I just thought about it. I thought about it this yesterday when I was walking the dogs, like, this property that I'm selling now, my wife and I are selling it. For, we're under contract and we close in a week in 2925. Okay. But we've been having renters pay down the mortgage quite a bit over the last 17, 16, whatever it's been years, 2007, 2006, 14 years we've owned that property. Um, so uh, the example I'm using is that, you know, we were able to keep that property. Right? Most people sell their, their primary residence. So maybe some of you don't have your primary residence yet. And maybe some of you are considering selling your primary residence. And with the education and the opportunity, um, you know, you're five or 10 years from now, that primary resident residence could turn in you if you turn it into a rental now, that could be your that could be a house that you might be 1030, 1030 wanting 10 years from now or 15 years from now, right? When when we don't really think about that, I guess what I mean is like, if I could look back, like right now I'm capitalizing on the investment I made with my wife 15 years ago. And we're reallocating those funds to something that is actually part of our retirement, which is this RV, right? And, and we're going to own it free and clear. And then we're going to rent it probably probably just for fun, we're going to rent it one or two, two weeks a, a month, um, which will bring in roughly like 1500 to $2,000 a month extra. Right. And so based on the, like, we were just talking about this based on the, the reallocation of, of what we're doing. In fact, we're moving out of this house. I think I told you that we've made that decision. We just picked up a rental down the street. Um, and, uh, and it's a little bit smaller house. <laughs> we're going to make it fun. Um, and it's just temporary. I don't know if we'll be there six months. We've signed, we're going to sign a year lease today, but, um, but I mean, if we need to break the lease, it's not a big deal, but you know, we'll get somebody else in there. It'll rent pretty quickly for them, but we're going to short-term rental this house. Right. And um, this was an opportunity that we got um, as a flip, right. I was flipping this house and it, and so we bought it really well. And, um, and we were able to uh, put, put money into it and force appreciation through fix up. But we also got appreciation over the last three years. Uh, as you guys all know, the markets are crazy. And then we also bought it well. So even if the market slid, I bought it well under, under market value in its as is condition. All of that being said, my point to this is, is that 
if if it seems a little bit not, I don't want to say not great, right? If you're if you're like me at all and you compare where you should be, um, what could have been, what what should have happened, because I, like I've told you guys this a million times, I, I think maybe not a million. I'm an exaggerator, as Keely can can attest. And if you go back to these recordings, it's proven. So so I'm a liar, but I've told you guys this a lot. In my opinion, you can do what I've done and more in half the time. There's no question. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a hundred units, right? If you talk to um, Steve Namora in Chicago, I think he has 50 rentals. I don't know if he owns them all by himself. He may have some partners on some of them, but I think he has 50, 50, 50 doors, give or take. He brings in somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think, I want to say brings in gross rents are somewhere around 50,000, 60,000 a month. Um, that's good. In my opinion, that's, that's, you know, uh, three times more than, than me. So the opportunity for you all is abundant. Um, uh, it's abundant with Renatus and, um, and, and in the last couple of years, the market's been a little bit harder to get a deal. Right. But if you get one, you know, like like this example that Keeley gave on Wednesday night with this guy in his first deal in his young age, um, and he's potentially going to make forty grand. I don't know. Forty grand, in my opinion, is a really good flip. Like that's a double or a triple on a on a on a, on a baseball scale um, on a flip. You know, a single is 10, 15, 20 grand. Um, you know, and um, and that's that's typical. Uh, in Utah, you guys get a little bit bigger spreads uh, than we do in Arizona. Um, and when you get the right deal in a market like this, you can you can sell it, you can get a little appreciation, you can get lucky, and you can and you can get a, little, a nice little profit. Um, it's still risky, but you know when the market moves, there's a lot more houses available. There's a lot less real estate investors. True. I mean, they only learn. I was talking to a girl yesterday. She's going to enroll in the education. She's one of my students' students. And she came out of a Facebook group. I'm telling you, the amount of people signing up out of Facebook groups is huge. Spend some freaking time in your face in, in Facebook groups. But the only way to be the expert in there is study your education. And I don't need to listen to it once at the gym. Uh, study it on purpose, even if it's a segment, and then go apply that segment to a specific comment in a Facebook group. And... Um, and then engage in a conversation outside of the Facebook group with them. And her questions were amazing. She has a lot of promise. She knows absolutely nothing about real estate investing. Nothing about, she understands the concepts. She understands what's possible. She is a go-getter. She's a nurse. She's financially stable. Um, and she wants it bad. She wants to buy property and get rentals and wholesale. But, uh, you know, again, the first thing she came out of her mind, I hope I'm, you guys are following me on this because I, like I said, I'm just trying to, I don't think there's any chats. I'm trying to share with you what's possible, right? Like, again, the, the idea was um, if there's something I can provide that is not just how to close somebody on a, on a $10,000 combo, right? But, um, like the bigger picture, um, the, I don't know, I don't know the term, Keely, like um, just like, like the bare naked truth about what it takes to, to, you know, get to a point where you're happy with, with where the direction you're going in, the success that you're having, if that makes sense. Like I look back and, and there's a lot of times you guys, for years, I was not happy even though I was making good money, I was coming from a place of just crap. Like I was so broke. Um, even in, you know, even after I started making money, I, you know, I made a hundred and I don't even know, $180,000 in 2013, uh, 2008. And, um, and we were still broke, like so broke and, uh, buying that Island property, um, that we lived in for 10 years, uh, was a huge mistake, right? We could be 10 times farther. And I, I don't look back me and, oh, I wish I could have, wish I could have. What is it? How's it go? Could have, would have, should have. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, like the other day I was training my team and I'm, I'm the, the, 
the thoughts that you guys can have, the opportunity you have to reach out to people in Renatus that you know in your local communities or me or whatever. Um, and, and you can look ahead. They can help you look ahead by looking back where they've been and come from, right? In their real estate and their business, right? And, um, you know, had we just held off or canceled that, that contract, you know, that increased our bills by over, by over 38, probably over almost 5,000 extra dollars a month that we had to come out of pocket to run that household, right? With two mortgages, three mortgages with the pool, and then the higher utilities, the HOA and the lawn care and, the, and everything. And then we, it was 3000 feet. I didn't want to damn well clean it. I didn't have enough time. So I paid for a cleaning lady. And, uh, and anyway, um, it, uh, it was, a, it was a burden. Okay. So, um, again, if anybody wants to chat out about some thought that you're thinking about that I can help ease your mind or, or give you an example, but, um, um, we're in, this girl was talking about wholesaling. And again, somebody told her she like, she's not opposed to education. Um, she did talk to some guy in, in the old Nubo days that I guess hated Nubo and he hates Bob and he hates Jim, his old partner. And, uh, so he, he just told her to stay away. So she, she's had this real obstacle, uh, to get over about Renatus, but she's open-minded when it comes to education. And she feels like the education is pretty solid. She likes the conversations she's had with, with my guy that it, that is, uh, enrolling her. And, um, and so, you know, he seems like he knows what he's doing, which he does because he's been studying the education. He's been putting it to use. So he's got some credibility. Um, uh, just from studying the education. So she, she believes it to be very knowledgeable, but the people she's been talking to are like just wholesale, right? So like, yeah, I just thought it'd be easier to wholesale to get into wholesaling, you know, cause it's easier and, you know, for beginners, right? Like this is the worst possible time to get into wholesaling in my opinion, because the wholesalers are full throttle, right? These guys have been established, right? And if they're, if they're already established, they're already, they're already training a bunch of newbies, to go out and do all their grunt work. They've got boots on the ground. They've got bird dogs, right? I'm getting calls from people and I'll pick up the phone and they don't have a clue what they're talking about. They are simply a, they are appointment setters. They are literally just calling on behalf of some wholesalers company uh, to buy my house, right? I've got buyers in your area. My wife and I were shopping the neighborhood and we just, we noticed, we just want to live there. We'd love to buy your house, right? All this stuff. I'm like, which house? They're like, uh, the one in Phoenix. Okay. I've got eight of them. So which one do you want in Phoenix? Right? Like whatever. And, um, but these wholesalers, they dialed in the, the no call voicemail, the automatic tax, the mailers, right? All the, the email campaigns. I mean, it's everywhere. They're, they're taking advantage of the market. The market's hot as heck. If they can tie up anything, they don't care. They're going to tie it up reduce it or give it back to the owner if they can't sell it. And, and they're going to throw, you know, noodles on the wall or, or whatever. What do you throw at the wall and hope something sticks? Keely, what is it? Like a dart or I don't know. Yeah, spaghetti noodles? noodle. You a got spaghetti it. it is? Okay, cool. So they're throwing it at the wall. And if it sticks and they hit it, great. If they don't, they could care less. But they're going to, how do you compete with that if you're broke? No credit, no money, just getting started. You got a full-time job. She's a full-time RN. And um, how are you going to compete? You're going to go door knocking. You don't have any time, right? You don't know how to convert a seller, right? She got, a, she got a guy to sell her four properties and she has no idea what to say to this guy. But yet wholesaling should be her strategy. That's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. She, I mean, how are you going to sit there and talk to a guy who obviously owns more than one house, which means he's sophisticated and now he's selling the houses in a market like this and she's going to convert them to wholesale them? It's not even possible. Right. And it's, it's unfortunately a waste of time, but what's worse is, is, is it's a waste of opportunity. Right. Or she said, she's so open to this. She's like, at least I can figure out. Right. And she's taking advice from this other guy. Right. And this guy that she's paid or whatever. And he's like, Oh, we just got to move on. There's no opportunity. When she's like, Bill, I just think there's opportunity there. This guy's really kind of motivated and, you know, he doesn't need to sell, but you know, he's got tenants in there that are paying and I think I could get him, you know, if I could understand owner financing or subject to or seller carry, 
Um, these are strategies that I think maybe I can lease it and then wrap it. I'm like, totally. There's so many opportunities. But, you know, all the gurus are teaching people to fix and flip in a market like this or wholesale. You should get into wholesaling because it's, it's easy for beginners. It's crap, in my opinion, but whatever. So anyway, again, I got no, we got 15 minutes left before the real estate thing. So I'm going to keep blabbing on concepts and ideas and my experiences so that you guys can maybe realize what's possible. But if you have any thoughts or comments on this, and I thought maybe it's going to be something people like some, you know, uh, thing where everybody's going to be like, oh yeah, I want to know this, but um, obviously that's not the case. <laughs> so, I want to know about your most recent uh, enrollment, Mr. Top 10. Oh, I didn't. When did I get on the top 10 yesterday? You were on the top 10 yesterday. What number was I? I don't remember that much, but you were like 22K. I think you got a you, Epics combo. Yeah. You yeah, got, got like number stuff. three. What's that? You were, you were like number three. Bam. Look at that. Yeah. Congrats, Billy. Didn't yeah. even know. Yeah, I got another one going in this week. Yep. And so, so how'd you do it? Uh, that is uh, all Facebook. Um, uh, it is a one market Facebook that has been following me for a couple of years and the timing was right. So this is that couple I sat down with, uh, for a one-on-one -on -one for two hours at lunch two weeks ago. And he actually got really busy and he ghosted me for over a week on text. And he's the guy who said, uh, he's a great guy, but he's like, they were, they were really concerned. They had bought a business before. And it didn't work out the way they wanted it. And they wanted kind of a guarantee in a way. Like what, if I buy this, how, what guarantee am I going to get that it's going to work? Right. And I can't guarantee, we know that even if, even if compliance didn't exist, how can I possibly guarantee and sleep at night? Right. Um, and, and so there's no way, in fact, I could probably guarantee that he, they could lose a little money along the way. <laughs> If not overall, but I could probably guarantee that and not get, get in compliance, right? That would probably be compliant. Well, I can guarantee you're probably going to lose some money or get sued along the way, one or the other or both. But um, I texted them, you guys, and I do this. I texted them, and this is my text. I said, I took the liberty of registering you for, a, I, call it a, I call it a real estate intensive training. So it's our, we call it our intensive the real estate intensive training. Heather is the fix and flip instructor, blah, blah, blah. I edified her in like two lines. Um, listen, obviously it's all day long on Saturday. You're a busy person. You got, or you guys are busy. I texted it to both of them, husband and wife. Even if you can get in for an hour or two, LOL, you'll probably want to watch it all day. It would be worth your time. No worries if you can't attend, right? Cause I didn't even ask them to attend. I didn't ask them if they wanted to. I just took the liberty of paying for it for them. Right. And say, I paid for it for you, but I took the liberty of enrolling you or uh, registering you and took care of it for you. Right. So I, I let on that, that obviously whatever fee was there, it's covered. And they attended and they said they had all day and they loved it. And Heather killed it. And Heather talked to the education. She talked to the opportunity with Renatus and Bobby T uh, did the presentation, right? And so they they enrolled that night. In fact, they were so excited after the intensive. I had two people enroll after the intensive, two that watched it. Um, and um, one is now funded and the other one's funding. So uh, that's where they came from. She was a warm market. Uh, I've known her, I haven't really, hung, I haven't seen her in three years since I moved, but I used to go to the gym with her or she was at our gym. So they were Facebook friends. Um, yep. And then the other enrollment is a, is a friend I, or someone, an acquaintance of mine I've known for 10 years, who's been wanting to do this for the last four years and finally is getting a position where she can pay for it. Right. So these are people that are qualified. They want it now. They're financially qualified. They know you and trust you and you're putting it out there that this is what you're doing. So it's just all the things are lining up exactly as they need to in these cases. So that's what we need to mirror. Yeah, I have, um, 
I have uh, a goal to uh, not only a goal, but I have a, a system right now that I'm on that I'm working on with my real estate and my for my marketing that I want to enroll one a combo a week till the end of the year because it'll put me over pack numbers again. Um, so that's my intention. So right now I've got two combos in two weeks, so I'm on I'm on pace. <laughs> so uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, and uh, and I, I fully intend to do that. I've got a very big pipeline that I worked on for the last ten months. Eight? How many months are we? Yeah, ten months. And it's just been a one of those years, right? Where I've had I've had at least a dozen no's on people that I would have assumed um, sixty percent of them would have enrolled, and they didn't. Um, so yeah, um, I've got another uh, two commitments so far. Um, it's a matter of timing, but um, two people I've been working on uh, very, very passively, um, well, actively, but very uh, patiently. And so um, I will tell you, you know, it's, it's, I hate these stupid things. What are they called, Keely? Uh, when like they say the fortunes in the fall, what are those things called? Cl cliche? That's a cliche? Yeah, you could call it a cliche phrase. Phrase? It's a phrase? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I'm terrible at them, right? And, and Bob Snyder's great at them, and, and, and Mike Loggins is great at them, and, and I should probably get great at them. But um, I used to think that's just stupid, right? Uh, everybody knows you got to follow up, but, you know, the fortune's in the follow up. But I will tell you, when I, when I analyze what I do, I follow up all the time. Like, I follow up all the time. I constantly engage in conversation in some way, shape or form with people that I know I can close. Not everybody, not, not everyone. But when I don't have anybody that I'm working on, like I followed up with a half a dozen people yesterday via text or messenger. And I don't think I've heard from any of them yet, but they're all right there on the fence, right? And they're, I'm waiting for the time to be right. And I don't follow up every day or every week by any means. But when I have no one else to follow up with, that's hot, right? That I'm working with actively, but, but patiently, then I look to other people that I haven't followed up with in three or four months. And then I, I literally follow up with them. But I will tell you, I do it personally and I do it creatively, intentionally, with, with some sort of personal message. And a lot of times, you guys, my message will take me three or four times to write out the right message that I want to send to them. So it has meaning. I don't do it in, in, a, in, in jest, right? I don't do it in a hurry. I don't do it just to do it so I feel good that I did something. I do it on purpose and intentionally. And, and, um, and so it, it, it doesn't always hit home on an instant response, but I, I think that it, I think that it, they get a message, right? And I didn't, uh, actually, I did have one guy, right? I saw him out socially on Saturday night and we've been missing each other on, on a follow-up meeting, a one-on-one -on -one follow up for weeks. He's been too busy at work. And we had a great initial one-on-one -on -one after he watched the video. And, uh, and he's, a, he's a three foot rule warm market. So he's warm market of my warm market. And then I three foot ruled him. And so uh, I texted him and I, I intentionally, let me read this before we close. And then I had one more thought. Um, oh, <laughs> he just texted me. Awesome. He just texted me 930. Okay. I'm like, yep. This is my text. 10, nine. So 10, nine was it. So yesterday, great to see you, my friend. I, I, I just saw him briefly Saturday night. Uh, hopefully things are a little easier for you now. Cause I knew he was busy. And then I want to write, are you still interested in discussing and exploring and understanding Renatus? Right? So that's the information part, gathering the information. Um, are you still interested in discussing and exploring and understanding? Those are choices. Those aren't, those aren't one word, right? Those are, those are different, because I don't know if he wants to explore, if he wants to understand it more, if he wants to discuss it more, right? 
Renatus and the opportunity, because Renatus is an opportunity, right? It's not a business opportunity. That's not, it's, a, it's an opportunity. It is an opportunity. You have something. And getting together again, or both, right? So maybe he just wants to get together again. Maybe he wants to discuss the opportunity. Again, a personal choice or an easier way to put things. Let me know, brother. I had a great time chatting with you. It was a nice surprise seeing you guys. I would love to explore the opportunities. I am off next week and would enjoy coffee, maybe midweek. Yes, sir. Let's do Wednesday is perfect. So then he just texted me this morning. I, I don't even know what that is, karma, or what, what do you call that? And um, I don't know. As I'm thinking here, talking about him, he texts me and says, 930, okay. Um, so anyway, that was someone I haven't talked to in multiple weeks. I think the last time I texted him was October 9th. Um, and he didn't respond to my October 9th text. And we've been trying to get together for two or for four weeks, again, on a follow-up. I've been trying to pin him down, follow up with him, um, and ask for the sale. And so anyway, I, I constantly follow up with people intentionally. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember where I was going with that. Yeah, tomorrow they are. I, I personalize every text to every person. Um, and I, I work with, you know, a fair amount of leads. I, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I'll finish with this before we move on to re- the, the dream call. Um, think about this, you guys. I thought about this on my walk home today on my dogs, 530 in the morning. Um, I thought about this with you guys. Um, there was a time when I marketed this business very half-assed and, and even half a half-ass. And, and I believe that that may be the reason that most people don't get the results that they want. Um, you're closing and all that stuff. I fail at closing. I was having a conversation with Jim in Pittsburgh and I've, I've failed on multiple occasions to close his people. Um, and, and I don't have an attitude like I can't close people. I don't have an attitude like, well, you know, I have a hard time convincing. I don't have that attitude at all, right? But I still fail to close these people. Qualified, ready, able, and willing people, I didn't close them. Quarter ass, I like that too. So here's what I was thinking, is that there was a time in 2016 when I decided to get back into this Renatus marketing full time. Now, I'm not saying you've got to do this full time. I know you already put a lot of time into it. But there isn't a day that goes by, not one day anymore, where I'm not, talk- I'm not texting or calling or talking to somebody. There are days every day that go by that I wish that I spent more than an hour or two hours on calls, right? I don't think I've ever spent two hours calling people, prospecting, ever, right? Um. Most days, there are multiple days during the week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, where I wish that I did. But there isn't a day anymore for four years that goes by that I don't prospect every day, that there's not somebody I'm reaching out to on some point. The problem is we go a day, then we go two, then we go four. Then we go a week because it's the weekend and we're doing crap. Then we look back on last week and we didn't do anything. And then the next week, that week, We're like, well, I don't even have anybody to call. I didn't do anything last week. And it's easy. And the farther we get away from it, and then we start over again, doesn't matter. It's okay. You don't have to beat up, beat yourself up like I do, but you could start. But once you start that consistency that Michael talks about and everybody else in the company um, and leadership, you know, I don't care what the consistency.